In this video, I want to take a look at how you can compile and debug programs in uh, C in Visual Studio Code. So I know that many of you are not uh, running on Windows and would like a proper uh, IDE. And I think Visual Studio Code is actually a pretty good fit for you guys as you don't have huge projects to work with and it's free and open source and very extensible, very customizable as well. With that said, let's get into it. Uh, first things first, what I want to try to show you here is on Windows, but part of most of it can be applied for Linux as well and for, for Mac OS too. Um, I'm going to use first MinGW to compile the program and then we're going to go into compiling it with Visual Studio as well, because why not? Just to show you that you can actually do it. First things first, what you have to do for MinGW is take a look at the video that I linked up top. Uh, that's a video that shows you how to do it how to compile and run code in Notepad++. Part of it is where you install the MinGW compiler. So just like, I think it's only the beginning part where I just install that and show you how to do it uh, on Windows. Next up, if you've got uh, MinGW installed, you should be able to open the MinGW installation manager. So that's what we used to install MinGW as the compiler and manage its versions and whatnot. Now, uh, there's an, there's one thing that we need to install besides what we installed in that video, and that is the debugger. So the debugger, what you have to do is just go into all packages here and under MinGW, you have to search for GD, GDB. So there's a package here that's called MinGW32 GDB bin. You mark that for installation and you hit apply changes here and then apply. And now we have GDB installed. That is important because we also want to be able to debug in uh, the IDE. Next up, to be able to uh, do anything with C or C++ in this editor, you have to install an extension. So you go to extensions here, you search for C slash C++, and there should be a, a, an extension made by Microsoft. So it should be the first one. And you just install this because this is so far, this is the best one that uh, works. and um, without this, you're gonna, you're not gonna have IntelliSense and a lot of other things that are needed to just debug the code inside the editor. Now that we have that running, if you installed it properly, you should be able to go to your code. So I have here a simple main.c, right? Just print, prints out hello there. That's all it does. So what you want to do is to build a file, usually what you have to uh, do in this editor is hit Control Shift B, right? And right now it's just showing this menu because it doesn't know what to build with, right? You have to give it a configuration. So what you should do is go here, hover over this and actually hit the cog item saying that you want to configure a task. Basically what that's, that does is if you hit this, it's going to automatically create you a tasks.json and that's going to uh, basically be there all the time. So whenever you run a uh, build, it's going to automatically know uh, what to build with. In these tasks.json, you can see a lot of information here. So uh, basically here you can store a lot of tasks the ID can uh, do, right? And here I have the task for building the current file, right? So in here we have, it's uh, the most important parts are this, which is the path to your gcc.exe. This is where the actual uh, compiler is installed. So if uh, you have an error saying that it's uh, not a valid path, you're going to have to change this guy. Next up are the arguments here. And what you have to take into consideration here is the dash G that should be found here. That tells the, uh, the compiler to compile the the exe in such a way that it can be debuggable. Okay, so here, this is why dash g is important. And then dash o and the file is the current file. Dash o says, okay, I want to output the exe to this location. And that's about it. And you have some other uh, options here. Now there's one uh, interesting thing that you, you should probably change here is this guy. So replace this build with an object and say here is default to true so that you don't have to keep on selecting it every time you build and set its kind, I think it's kind to uh, build like that. And now if I go to my main.c file and hit Control Shift B, 
you'll notice I don't have to select anything, it's just gonna automatically build it. And it successfully built it. Okay, here is some uh, messages saying that, okay, it built and to, just to double check, we can delete the exe file and simply build it again and we should get another exe file. There we go, so that works. Now onto debugging the actual file. So if I add here a breakpoint, I want the file to just uh, break to that breakpoint and show me some information about file. Let's actually add a variable here. Let's say int x equals 15. And we should see it in the debugger somewhere in here. How do you do, how do, you do that? First, uh, let's go here to the run specification and it's gonna prompt us to actually create a JSON file or launch.json file. So I can do that and it's gonna ask me what I want to build. Well, I want to build C++, it's GDB or LLDB. What we're using is GDB, so definitely this. And for me, it's multiple options, but I think I just, either one works in this case. And as you can see, it it built the program first, and then it ran it and it we got to a breakpoint and we got here to the left 15, which is our X. Uh, the value of our x here. So this is nice and then we can of course uh, step over and then let's see let's say f5 and that should continue and finish the program. Nice. Now one key thing here is what this uh, process created because this actually did a few automatic things and that is uh, it created a launch.json. So this launch.json resides in the same uh, directory as tasks.json. This launch.json what it does is uh, basically tell the IDE to either launch certain programs or hook to certain debug uh, debugging servers so that you can actually debug the file that you're working with or the project itself really. So in here, I'm not gonna go too much into detail but a few important uh, things are again the path, not to your gcc.exe but to your gdb.exe. So this has to be valid. You have to be careful when uh, setting it up. Uh, if you if it says something like uh, MI debugger path is invalid, then you haven't installed gdb.exe. So we're gonna go ahead and actually install it or you uh, missed uh, the path and the path is not right. Now another key thing here is the program that you're trying to launch. So the program is always this guy, which is really the file you selected .exe instead of whatever extension it has. So if you are on main.c, uh, main if you try to run this, it's gonna work, it's gonna hit the breakpoint, nice and fast. But if you, for example, are on another file or something like launch.json, and if I try to run the program, the project itself, from for whatever reason from here, it's gonna say that no, it cannot actually like build the file because it's a JSON. It basically what it does, it tries to build the JSON file itself. So in here, what we can do is change this guy to actually point to the main.exe that we're getting here. So what we can say is, for example, uh, here instead of this, say main.exe, right? And we have to also change this to be the workspace folder. So the workspace folder, because um, the file dear, dear name is really the, the file, the, the directory of the file you're currently in. And as you can see here, launch.json is in the .vs code folder. So that's why you're gonna have to do that. And same thing with tasks.json, you can change this so that instead of having just the current file, you can say uh, something like it's workspace folder slash or backslash backslash main.c and similarly down here, but with main.exe like that. And now if I try to build this, I should be able to, as you can see, it uh, build, it did build, and uh, if I run this, I should be able to run it, and I should get a breakpoint. And here we go, very nice. And I can see here that X is indeed five. One other aspect uh, to make sure that everything works correctly, if you encounter any issues with building, is this guy pre-launch task. And this really refers to the task in the tasks.json, right? This says, okay, before running, I want you to build the file, right? Uh, so this, this name here has to be the same with the name here, right? Sometimes uh, I notice that Visual Studio Code sometimes generates multiple tasks. So just in case it does that, just make it the same here as it's in there. And it's gonna actually use this task 
and it's gonna be customized as you want. So everything that I taught you here should work on Linux as well, just with GCC, you know, not with MinGW and maybe the installation is a bit uh, different, but I think you should figure it out from there. Uh, now I'm gonna show you how to build using just Visual Studio. So the Visual C compiler uh, com uh, that comes with the Visual Studio ID, not Visual Studio code. So how do we do that? Well, it's a very similar uh, route. Now to compile with Visual C or C++, first you have to install it. So I'm gonna have here, uh, this is the page for it, and you can install the Visual Studio uh, IDE itself, that's free to download, and it's gonna install with it the compiler and the debugger as well. But if you can go to all downloads here, and uh, if you go to tools, I think, and there they are, you have build tools for Visual Studio 2019. And here you will actually install the compiler and the debugger that we need to actually run all this. And besides all this, uh, once you've done this, you should have in, uh, let me get it here. Inside the start menu, you should have a developer command prompt for VS 2019. So something like this, you're gonna have to actually either open it or uh, run the command to actually initialize it. Uh, it should be pretty simple, you open it from start menu and what you have to do is actually launch VS Code from here. My installation of Visual Studio Code is actually located in App Data, so be careful with that if your installation is also there. So users, your user App Data, local programs, Microsoft VS Code and here I actually listed all the files, you can see code.exe. So you're gonna have to launch this from within this command prompt because otherwise the the compiler com and the, the debugger commands won't be available to the to the editor. Now, if I want to build it with uh, Visual C, what I have to do is first hit Control P here and give it a an arrow, an angled bracket, or however you want to call it. And here, just select the C C plus plus build and debug active file. Hit that, and again generate another. Uh, well, another configuration for cl.exe. This cl is the compiler that Visual Studio uses. That's the actual Visual C compiler, or Visual C, C++ compiler. If I hit this, it's gonna try to build it using Visual C. And here in the tasks.json file, we can say that, okay, here we have one of the tasks. And if I collapse this, we also have the other one. This is for uh, the Visual C, C++ stuff. And similar things here, just have the type, the label, the command that it's using, which is just cl.exe, and then the arguments are a bit different, a bit strange. I think zi is for debugging, and uh, this case stands for outputting an executable. I'm not sure what this is for. Um, and again, you can change these if you want as well. But now we have built our program with Visual C, C++, and now, we can do the same for the launch stuff. So if I want to go here and actually configure this, let me see, I think I have to say add configuration. So if you go to run right here, add configuration, and from this list, what you have to choose is C, C++ Windows launch. So that says that uh, you want to build with the Windows compiler, but you want to launch the program. You don't have a uh, GDB, instance that you have to hook into right so in this case we have uh, it generated for us automatically this whole thing but it's not complete so here we're gonna have to actually uh, fix a couple of things namely this guy this program here is very broken right uh, so we're gonna have to have uh, this removed and actually point to the proper folder and I use double backslash as I've used before but I think you can use slashes as well um, and here main.exe, that's the executable that we're using, right? A current working directory and whatnot. Now, if we select from here, I know you, can, you cannot actually see it, but if I make it a bit bigger, it's gonna select for GCC. I want to select for, I want to actually uh, launch with our Windows uh, debugger. And if I uh, hit run, we should actually launch the program. But as you might notice, well, it did actually launch, but it didn't break point because I didn't have a breakpoint. <laughs> Let's launch it again. And we hit that breakpoint. And as you can see, uh, this also works. There's just a few caveats. 
One thing is you actually have to run Visual Studio Code using uh, the command prompt. And that's really all it is to setting it up on Visual Studio Code. As you can see, it's very simple. Everything is basically out and completed. All you have to do is just uh, change a couple things here and there if you have installed them differently. Okay. Um, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope this was useful. And if you do use Visual Studio Code, let me know. I would actually like to see more people use Visual Studio Code for C and C++ development. This, is, this would be pretty cool because I use it all the time and uh, I'm not too used to Visual Studio itself. Okay, thanks so much for watching and take care. Bye.